President Biden is facing new pressure over the situation in Cuba, this time from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr. They're both calling on the president to get Internet access into Cuba, where it's been cut off by communist leadership, to silence dissent and prevent the spread of information. Commissioner Carr says the process can begin as soon as it receives authorization. Joining us now to discuss is the host of the Matt Walsh, Walsh Show on The Daily Wire, Matt Walsh. Matt, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, Thank you. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, not surprisingly, uh, she finally broke her silence on Cuba, and of course she's slamming the United States and the U.S.-Cuba policy. Take a listen. And what's extraordinarily important for us to communicate as well is, you, is, the, is the actions and U.S. contributions to the suffering of Cubans on the island as well. And that is directly related to the embargo, the U.S. embargo, uh, economic embargo, that is, uh, that is frankly, uh, has been in place for over 60 years. The embargo, the U.S. embargo, is absurdly cruel. All right, Matt, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, not, not a surprising comment from her. We've had a debate about the embargo in this country for a very long time. But do you feel that the administration is doing enough to, to be supportive of these dissidents in, uh, in Cuba? No, probably, probably not. I mean, and, and this from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, we have to understand that she is, this is the opinion that she's ideologically beholden to, because from her perspective as you know, a leftist, a, a member of the leftist religion, uh, part of that, part, part of the dogma there is that the United States is the center of all the evil in the world. And so everything has to be our fault one way or another. And obviously she's also going to be very reluctant to, to criticize a communist government, which is one of the reasons why I know there are a lot of, you know, many Republicans have come out aggressively against the communist uh, government in Cuba, which I think is, which I think is great because I oppose them as well. But I think we should be just as aggressive about the left-wing communist takeover of this own of our own country, which of which uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez <laughs> is a part. You know, that that to me is is should be our our primary focus. Yeah, you know, it's interesting though because she's she's blaming us for the conditions there, but Cuba's closest allies are Russia and China, uh, which are authoritarian, socialist if not communist, uh, you know, uh, countries. So. The, any failure there in Cuba is proof positive that her her ideology does not work because they should, uh, under her logic, um, they should have all that they need as a country. They shouldn't need they shouldn't need the United States as, at all, right? Well, they shouldn't, and we we know this. This is this is one of the best arguments. If 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 anyone on the other side cared about facts or anything then this would, should be an argument that's pretty persuasive to them, which is you, you say that communism works, well, show me where it has, because in, in application, we look all throughout the world today and throughout history, you see nothing but death and despair and misery, and that's what you find, that's what you find with communism. You know, in fact, Nicole Hannah-Jones of 1619 fame, she was on a podcast that resurfaced recently where she said that in, well, in Cuba, they have uh, equality. She said that a few years ago. And she's right in the fact that <laughs> there is equality in Cuba and that everyone is poor and oppressed. And that's the kind of uh, equality you get under a communist regime. Yeah. Yeah, they're all equally oppressed. President Biden is also speaking out, denouncing communism in, in perhaps the softest of terms. Take a listen. Communism is a fail system, universally fail system. And uh, I don't see socialism as a very useful substitute. But Uh, it, not a very useful substitute. Uh, again, I think uh, I don't know if he was reading that from the teleprompter that somebody you know somebody wrote for him or 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 what. But again, I get the sense that we there is an opportunity here to um, to support what's going on in Cuba, and uh, and this administration is uh, it doesn't really seem to know what to do about it. Yeah, because again, a, a communist government, that's not, those are not supposed to be the villains that we're focused on. This, this is the last conversation that Joe Biden wants to have. I think calling, saying socialism is not useful is about the faintest criticism you could possibly offer of something, <laughs> or even to call it a failed system, which it is. 
But um, I, I think that's a, that's a calculated criticism also, because all, all you're doing then is you're criticizing the end result, right? And so that leaves open mm -hmm. the possibility that, well, it hasn't worked so far, but maybe it'll work in the future, which is what you hear from people who are communist apologists in this country. They say, oh, it, it, it hasn't really, no one has really tried the real thing. It's not just that communism has failed, though it is, it's also that it is, uh, it's evil. And so in that sense, actually, it doesn't fail. I, I, I would argue, in fact, that the result we see in Cuba is the point with communism. So when you look at it another way, it actually has not failed at all. It's done exactly what it intends to do. And it also seems to be continuing to use COVID as an excuse for what's going on uh, in Cuba, just as a, in a very, very narrow sense. Take a listen to his comments here. On the, I mean, excuse me, they have a COVID problem on, in, on, in Cuba. I would be prepared to give significant amounts of vaccine if, in fact, I was assured an international organization would administer those vaccines and do it in a way that average citizens would have access to those vaccines. So, so he still thinks that this is about coronavirus, Matt, and that, that's really disturbing to me. He seems to the focus everything, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, domestic policy, foreign policy, it's either on COVID or, or climate change. Uh, does he, do you think he really thinks that this is about coronavirus instead of oppression, or uh, is that just an, an excuse for, for you know, trying to offer some form of, of faint aid uh, that won't actually do anything about uh, about the regime there in Cuba. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that he hasn't blamed I, I, maybe, that he hasn't blamed climate change yet. Maybe we'll hear that. Maybe somebody already has <laughs> tied this into climate change. I'm sure somebody has. Uh, but you're, you're right. It's COVID. It's climate change. These are these are the things we we go to. I, I don't I don't think that he actually thinks that. I'm not sure that Joe Biden thinks anything at all these days. But no, I don't believe he actually believes that. But COVID is another convenience tool that um, the powers that be have, as we've seen over the last year. And uh, as long as it's around in any capacity, they are going to use that tool for sure. Yeah. You know, we've talked a lot about this this week. Uh, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is under fire over his message to Cuban and also Haitian refugees attempting to flee their countries amid the crisis there. And he said, if you take to the sea, do not come to the United States how tone deaf do you believe it was to say uh, to Haitians and Cubans that can't come, but it seems to be okay for people from like a hundred other countries to stream across the Mexican border? Yeah, it's a, it's a total double standard. Now, if you wanted to take an absolute hardline absolutist position, and that's your message to everyone, we don't want anyone coming here illegally, then fine, I would, I would have no problem with that personally, if that is sure. the consistent right. hardline message that you're taking. Um, but that's that's not it at all. These are the only people, this is the only group that the, the Biden administration doesn't want coming. And I think that should probably tell you everything you need to know. All right. Matt Walsh, our friend from The Daily Wire. He's also the author of The Church of Cowards. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.